I think it's really just been a transfer of my creative energy and vibration and moving that out of my body in different ways as I've kind of moved through the sequence of my job title. Hello and welcome to the Awardist. I'm Entertainment Weekly writer Marcus Jones and I'm very excited to be joined by one of the stars of hit HBO series Euphoria. She plays Jules and co-wrote and co-produced this winter's special episode, Fuck Anyone Who's Not a Sea Blah Blah. Please welcome Hunter Schaefer. How's it going? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you. And I mean, wow, just (laughs) an episode. What a first season, by the way, because I feel like people were not expecting... uh, how big euphoria would become so i want to know i'm still processing yeah that it blows my mind and is pretty unfathomable even to this day or hard to wrap my head around how far it has reached i mean i i get new inklings of uh that reach every day which is the freakiest and coolest thing ever So why'd you run away? Really? How did it feel to see the reaction to an episode you actually co-wrote? Because the demand was yeah. already there and then you got to like supply it and be like, hey, I'm trying something new. On a personal note, I was uh, really excited to delve into screenwriting. It, it's something that I had started messing around with within the deep isolation that came with quarantine and uh, and routine phone calls with Sam, who's our screenwriter, show creator, uh, director, etc. And uh, yeah, it happened pretty organically and in a beautiful beautiful way it is something really special that I hope feels necessary for uh folks who are dealing with some of the same stuff uh which seems to be a good chunk of the reaction which has been nice and from everything I've heard about uh the euphoria set uh it sounds like Sam is very collaborative and everyone gets to really discuss their characters so uh in figuring out how to begin screenwriting was that like the foundation you had that you've always had these conversations with Sam yeah I I think that is uh at least partially the basis on on like my introduction to screenwriting is just uh I mean I think I think I've been character building for as long as I can remember uh however for most of my life that took form in visual art and Mm -hmm. like drawing and writing and making comics when I was younger or uh or like fashion design which I was really into in uh middle school and high school uh and and then uh and then yeah the acting came along and it kind of felt uh similar in the sense in that uh it's character building to some degree and then yeah so and 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 writing followed acting really nicely because I found a lot of the techniques that Sam had taught me as an actor uh were applicable to our writing process as well and so in in, in that way he's been just one of the biggest and most influential mentors I've ever had has the aspiration always been to be an artist because in pretty quick progression you've gone from model to actor, to now writer, producer, and it sounds like you've been able to find the art in all of those. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, it. I can confidently say it all feels exactly like the same wavelength, the same one that that uh, like is. I don't know somewhere in my heart that uh, made me draw all day every day when I was a kid and like into my teens and then into art school that then like you know I think it's really just been a transfer of my creative energy and vibration uh just 
and, and moving that out of my body in different ways as I've, as, as I've kind of moved through the sequence of my, uh, my job titles. My growth as an artist is at a completely different pace than my growth or evolution as like um, someone who uh, makes things as a part of the industry now but I think that that dichotomy feels nice and I think I want to keep it around just because uh it's important to be making things for yourself too was there anything that like scared you about exploring this character and especially getting in deep uh her feelings on transitioning and the backstory with her mom as those much heavier aspects some of the stuff we tackle in the episode uh like was already established by sam it, like four jewels before before i ever even became a part of it some of the aspects that we talked about in the episode uh were uh introduced to the character as we filmed season one and as sam and i got to know each other better and as we got to know Jules better as a character, like through that relationship and just through inhabiting her, that also with a sprinkle of uh, quarantine mania, I think made an interesting little uh, combo because they kind of cover a lot in the in the therapy session, it's a little bit all over the place, but I think uh, thematically it all ties in really nicely. But it mm. was incredibly interesting to hear Jules talk about like, I used to think of it as a broadening, a thickening, and sort of that evolution. It is something like you're contributing to a TV canon that we've never seen before. Like it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny that those lines uh, are actually from a poem I wrote when I was 19, 18, 19, uh, when I had first moved to New York, kind of still settling into being on that new level of independence and and was really thinking for myself at the time. And uh, and I just saved it. Uh, I like posted it on Instagram a couple years ago and then I archived stuff kind of as fame happened uh, and but still held on to it uh, just because uh, I feel like it is a safe move to hold on to things. Uh, or like like little testaments of who, who you were at a time uh, and for this reason. And that I think it really, I mean, that's one of my favorite um, lines and sequences of the episode is when she uh, refers to the ocean to talk about her transness. And I find some of the most accuracy in speaking about transness, at least for her and at least for me in some senses in that way. I've always thought of puberty as like a broadening or a deepening or like a, th a thickening, which I, th I think is like why I was always so scared of it, you know? Because in my head, women were always like small and thin and delicate and, you know, so like the thought of puberty, like this, irreversible forever fucking metamorphosis was just like fucking terrifying and you know that like when it happened I'd just like end up on the other side like stuck or even worse just like a man like like through and through and then femininity would always be this just like it's like elusive distant thing you know like unreachable but uh, but then I think about beautiful things that are also broad and deep and thick. And I think of something like the ocean. I think like, I, I wanna be as beautiful as the ocean. Cause the ocean's strong as fuck and feminine as fuck and like both are what makes the ocean the ocean season one we made it very intentional to uh keep her identity uh like pretty unaddressed uh because straight up it's it's not necessary in my mm. opinion 
nor in Sam's opinion, to like give it a label, especially at her age. She's 17. Like, how the hell is she supposed to put a fixed label on a very fluid identity? Uh, and, you know, at, at 17, like, how the fuck do you know who you are uh, at that age? I still don't know who I am. And I'm uh, five years older than that now, which is crazy. Um, yeah, it, it, I definitely felt hesitant about delving into it. Um, but with my with this episode coinciding with my first time getting to co- co-write or write for television at all, it felt like a safe opportunity to like delve into it and have control over that narrative and and like uh, approach it with a sense of freedom that I feel like uh, not to not to uh, come for uh, the, the PC culture that uh, I think can surround social media and things that influence the media we're consuming now. Uh, however, I do think it can be slightly stifling sometimes for um, something as complex and as fluid as uh, transness and gender and sexuality because they're all linked and they're all deeply deeply human uh spirals and ways of knowing yourself I'm really happy with how it turned out and obviously I feel so safe with Sam to just throw out any ideas um he gets it down to a T as far as uh who I am and my values as a trans person and and uh what I'm looking for when I uh, consume trans media and and also just like we want to make cool shit about trans people so I hope it fell into that category. In the writing the show always approaches Rue and Jules's relationship like relationship first even in uh, Jules's uh, therapy session it's not exactly like oh well what does this mean about like your sexuality that uh, on the show we've seen you with men you're Mm. now with Rue it's more approaching it as like Mm. here's my relationship with Rue Mm -hmm. let's address the issues of the relationship rather than sort of yeah the societal aspects of it yeah I mean I think there's a lot of layers in that too on multiple levels in in that uh I mean I think that's also something personal that I felt I could bring to Jules's uh, uh, character as well as the sort of weird layers of or weird process of removing layers of of uh, like compulsory heterosexuality and then rebounding to some some form of compulsory homosexuality or or like giving your sexuality some sort of label that is referring to the binary when the gag is that of course there are binary trans folks but not all binary cis folks uh have that kind of space for us that's what one of my favorite things about the uh the the, their relationship in season one is is that it is so ambiguous and that it's based upon a deep friendship uh first and foremost I love that scene the 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 last scene of the episode after their distance I think you can tell just how much they missed each other and they missed like the the sense of home that they provide for each other in this weird like fucked up town and uh with these weird fucked up people all around them I feel like despite it being maybe a bit of a heavier scene and uh, there was something hopeful about it that I really enjoyed and that there was vulnerability there between them. Uh, even if it was a short moment, I, it uh, it still left me with a sense of hope. It's one thing to uh, co-write your first TV screenplay and it be well-received. It's another thing to be able to incorporate music 
in a way that creates moments that you see fans latch on to. So what was it like to uh, incorporate music thinking, of course, the liability opening that you saw everyone was like, we're immediately wrecked, how could you? But oh my God. bringing on Arca, having uh, the Billie Eilish and Rosalia song be a part of the episode. Music is deeply, deeply important to me. Sam and I's primary forms of conversation is literally just sending each other songs, mostly in the context of like, oh, this would sound good for this scene or, or like in this episode in some way, but also just uh, just because we like to share cool songs with each other and with the platform that the show has given me to be able to make connections with artists who I've admired for so long and like ask for like ask for them to contribute it it, it still blows my mind uh, I mean liability lord was my first true music love pure heroin changed my life and uh melodrama like deeply deeply just hit for me uh uh when it came out I mean she's she's to this day I, I listen to this album uh, to to those albums and and I love her to death and she sent me the sweetest letter after the episode came out blew my mind had me in tears and um you know that was like a childhood icon and uh same thing with Arca. I found out who she was in high school and was just absolutely stunned by her beauty and inclination to avoid anything concrete or certain, uh, whether that's in her work or just like in her livelihood as an artist. Like, like uh, it's it's so inspiring. For anyone who wants to see Hunter Schaefer as Jules in an episode she co-wrote and co-produced titled Fuck anyone who's not a C block. You can watch Euphoria on HBO and HBO Max. Thank you so much, Hunter Schaefer. <laughs>